Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be learning how to localize your React application with IAT Next. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So as usual, I've started with a brand new Create React app, update the styling a bit, and I've just updated the app.js um, to show what we have here on the screen. So what I've tried to do is just give you a few different examples of um, different variants essentially of text. So we have a, a, just a standard welcome text here um, in a tag at the top. We have some sample text with um, some additional tags, um, basically bold and italics. And then we have a, another tag at the bottom here, uh, which contains a piece of state that we want to track um, if we localize as well. Um, and that's also going to take into consideration pluralization of, of, the, um, of the tag as well, or of the text. So the idea is just as you change the language, that's going to, that's going to update. So we should see a, a change. Cool. So let's start off by installing the dependencies. Uh, and you can do this by running npm install in next and react IAT next. So I've already done this, so I'm just gonna skip over it. So first thing we're gonna do is ensure we have the IAT and react IAT imports added, and then we're gonna initialize IAT n. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this use function to basically pass in the react IAT plugin, which it essentially is, um, and that basically configures IAT to use react uh, IAT next. Uh, and then we're gonna initialize um, the IAT. So we're going to pass in some resources and the resources are essentially going to be your translation files. In this case, um, there's going to be two objects above. It's worth noting at this point, when you initialize um, IAT-N, there's different types of backends that you can use, which means you can basically say, hey, instead of you know looking at these local files, go fetch the files from some sort of remote um, API. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to stick with the, the simple ones here. Um, next up, we're going to define the, the starting language. Uh, we're also going to define the fallback language just in case the, the language we're trying to reach doesn't exist. And one final thing for React, we're just going to add this uh, interpolation property here to tell it to escape values because basically React handles it um, uh, for us. And the final thing we want to add here is basically just a, a suspense fallback while it's loading the um, loading the translations. So let's just add suspense here, loading, and we'll just wrap that around the entire app. There we go, and we'll just make sure that's imported from React. So let's go all the way up to the top, and let's just add suspense here. Perfect. So to start translating, all we need to do is import a, um, a function from a hook, and the function is gonna be called t, and that comes from use translation. So that's all we need to do to get started, and that's just gonna hook into the i18n, um, and basically give you all the keys that are available. So instead of just hard coding welcome here, we're gonna remove welcome, so make sure it goes on the right hand side there, there we go. And we're just gonna call this T function with a key, right? And the keys can be wherever, wherever you want. So I'm just gonna call this key welcome. And what we can do is we can add welcome key here along with some welcome text. So let's add that there. And I'm also gonna add the French translation, which I will uh, copy over here. Perfect, so now we can see the welcomes back and that's coming from this translation here. So there we go. Um, let's see how to change the language. So in terms of changing the language, I'm just gonna hook into the on change for the drop down here. And all we're gonna do here is call out to the um, i18n, and that's got a function called change language, and you're just gonna pass in the language. So in this case, I have the value of my drops down, my drop downs at um, en and fr. So I'm just gonna do uh, event.target, dot uh, value so it's just going to be either en or yeah fr and that should be it so if i save that and come over here to the right if i change to french you can see that that's changed to uh, bienvenue and we have the english text there next up we want to translate this piece of text here uh, and note that this piece of text has some basically bold and italics text as well so this is all going to be reflected essentially in our translation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another key here called sample and this is gonna have a value of sample text, just like we did before. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add something else to this translation just so it recognizes that it's bold and it tags. So there's a few different ways. I'll link them in the description below. I'll show you the way that I like to use it, which is basically, we're gonna add essentially tags here. They look like HTML tags. Um, and these can be whatever you want, whatever name you want. So I'm just gonna keep them basically quite um, relevant. So bold, and then I'm gonna add an italics one. So uh, italics. And then we're just gonna make sure this text word um, is actually in the middle. Cool, so 
as it is right now, um, I18 and isn't going to be able to or react I18 isn't going to be able to understand what those means. So we need to actually tell them what bold and italics reference. So as it is right now, React I18N doesn't understand what bold and italics are. So we need to explicitly tell them what to render essentially when you see these tags. So the way we do that is we're going to go down to this P tag and we're going to add a new component from um, React I18, which is called the trans component. So what we can do here is we can give it the value um, or the key that it references as the child. So sample is the key. So we're going to pass that in as the child and that's how it knows um, which translation. And one other thing we need to do is we need to tell it what to do when it sees these um, bold and italics tags. So we're going to add an object here under the components prop. And let's just remove these pieces of text here. And we're basically going to say, if you see a bold tag, then replace that with a strong tag in the HTML. And if you see italics, then replace that with I. And that should be it. So if I save that now, on the right hand side, it should be essentially the exact same. And of course, if I look into the elements here, let me just bring this down and click on this guy, it should still say, yeah, strong uh, and I. So if I change this, for example, to bold, um, that's going to change to bold. There we go. So let's just add in the French translation. So there we go. And oh, I think I've got italics instead of italic. There we go. And now, just to double check, if I change this to French, this is going to highlight basically exactly what we need it to highlight here as well. So that's all working fine. And the final thing that we're going to add is the translation for this piece of text here. And of course, this one has actually a piece of state. So let's see how we handle that. So we're going to add another key again here. And we're going to call this one changed. So this is the number of times it's changed. And again, we're going to let's just copy and paste this piece of text here. So you have changed the language. And this one is basically going to use double braces syntax and we're going to add a variable name and we're going to pass that variable name in later on. So we're going to do um, count and you may have noticed that of course what we want is we want this to change um, to be times or time depending on the number, right? So if it's one, it's going to be time and um, anything else is going to be times. And we can do that actually just by adding plural, um, a key. So it needs to be the exact same key and adding uh, underscore plural um, and the same text and just change this one to times. And what this does is this will actually look for a count variable, which happens to be the same name as our variable. So it looks for a count variable, which will I'll show you in a moment. And if it's more than one, or if it's, I guess, um, zero as well, it's going to um, automatically recognize that and change the, the plural for you. Otherwise, it's going to um, use the, the changed key. So as far as we're concerned, we'll use the changed key. Um, and it's just going to handle the rest for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here um, to our p tag. Uh, that's perfect. And what we're going to do is replace this with the T function. There we go. And this is going to be changed. So just change. And it's going to take in a second argument. And the second argument is basically all our um, variables. So in this case, we've got one called count. So React 18, like I said, happens to recognize that you know count um, is going to affect the, the translation. So based off of the count, it's either going to use changed and plural. And of course, we can access the actual count itself within our translation. So you can see here that it's using the, the times, so three times here. And if I change the count to one, and I come over and refresh this, it's gonna say one time. And again, if I start there, two times, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add in the, the final uh, French translation. So let's add in changed and the value there. And actually for French, um, According to Google Translate, this the text doesn't actually change um, based off of the number, so we don't need to add a, a changed plural uh, key. So now, if we change this, it's going to change, um, and of course, we also have the pluralization of the English text as well. And that's basically it. That's how you um, localize your app. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.